الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أخت هارون سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم Allah Ta'ala whoever he gives children to he should be grateful to Allah Ta'ala Allah Ta'ala whoever he wants gives children he gives daughters whoever he wants he gives sons to and if Allah Ta'ala wants he gives both sons and daughters and if some people Allah Ta'ala does not give anybody that's the power of Allah Anyway, a complete family is and there are the sons, their daughters. Then the uh, the bringing up of sisters and brothers is complete. You know, the small little children in the house they spend a lot of time with each other. You know, the parents they come they go so the do- the parents are like doctors who come and who go but the children are like nurses who remain in the ward all along the, sis- the brothers and the sisters they spend like 33 percent of the time together the one third of the time they spend together And between 14 and 17 years of age. So they spend like 17 hours together. I think that's what he said. So children, they will fight with each other, they play with each other, and they will fight, but after some time they're playing. The children between two and four, every ten minutes they have a clash with each other. And the four to seven years of age, every twenty minutes they have a clash with each other. But Allah Ta'ala has given them in such a personality. That they just patch up with each other very quickly. There is a research of a US university. So the boys who have sisters, they make you more lovely. And because the sisters, they give love to their brothers. So these boys, they, they, they get this feeling that they're important and they make, make them more loving. There's a research of Ohio University that with every sibling, the chances of divorce reduce. So more the children people have the chances of divorce is decreased. The example is like the roots of a tree. If it's one root, then the tree is weak. If there are two roots, it is relatively stronger. If it's three, then even it's stronger. The more would be the roots, the stronger will be the tree. So just like the more the ch- children are in the family, the basis, the foundations of the family are strong and the uh, and the chances of divorces are reduced. So there is a research of a UK university that that though the sisters make you more communicative. So if if the kids, if the if the male, if the boys have sisters, then they increase communication skills. Texas University, there is a research. The boys who have sisters are more sympathetic. They have more sympathy in their hearts. 
they express sympathy with their sisters and they develop that in their personality. So there is another research at Texas University that the boys with sisters are achievers. because they get the company of the sister. The sister should have some qualities in her. Number one, love and compassion. She should have love and compassion. So sisters should live with love and compassion and care with their brothers. Prophet she ha he had a foster sister her name was Shima, she was the sister, daughter of Hanima Saadiya. So she was uh, elder in age and she would carry Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and would and also recite poetry, nursery rhymes basically. So she used to say, Oh Allah, keep Muhammad for us. So just like we say, May Allah give you a long life, just like that. She would say, Oh Allah, keep Muhammad with us. Keep keep him for us. So when Allah Ta'ala gave uh, victory over their tribe to Muslims, so the, all the captives were brought to Madinah Munawwara. So when they were brought to Prophet Sallallahu one Sahabi came and they said, he said that, oh Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's a, there's a woman standing outside and she's saying that I want to meet with your Prophet, I'm his sister. So initially Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that I am the only son of Abdullah, I did not have a sister. But then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, or I bring that woman to me. So when she was brought, then she said that I am your sister Shima. The so Prophet said, so what is the proof that you are my sister? So she said that when you were a small little kid, the once I was lo loving you, then, and you know, and I irritated you and when you got irritated, you cut me with your teeth on my body. You know, when they're small little kids, you know, when they have teeth, they, they just bite on everything. <clears throat> so, at that time, you bit me on my body and there were marks on my body. So, she also told the story and also showed the look. This is where you bit me. The Prophet Sallallahu also remembered that. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Yes, you are right. You are my foster sister that you used to play with me when I was young. Then Prophet Sallallahu honored his sister a lot. It comes in hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu he spread his shawl on the ground and asked Shima to sit on that shawl. Yani Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is showed through his action that brothers they honor their sisters. That he spread his own shawl on the ground and said that you sit on it. Then after that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that if you want to stay with me then I take your guardianship. But she said no I want to go back to my village to my tribe. So Prophet Sallallahu said, all right, so we will make sure that you will reach your tribe. Then she said that if I go back by myself, then they will object on me. Then Prophet Sallallahu on her intercession, Prophet Sallallahu freed up all of the people of her tribe. And then he gave a lot of goats to her. And also make two Sahaba responsible to take Shima back home. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he proved through his action that brothers, how much they take care of their sisters and how much do they honor their sisters and they give them respect.
in the heart of the sisters it is certain love for their brothers is a certain thing that's why it's our experience that whenever a woman will talk uh, with Hazrat first thing he would that he would ask that, uh, ask for duas for his fa- her family if a woman will call she will ask for duas for her family and second she will make she will say that make dua for my brother as well <coughs> so Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu when he was martyred in Uhud when the war was finished so the Muslims were looking at the dead bodies of their family members so the Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu his body parts were cut he was mutilated so it was very hard to look at the at the dead body of Sayyidina Hamza his eyes were taken out his ears were cut the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was told that his sister Sayyidina Safiya radiallahu ta'ala had gone to the battlefield to look at his body and Prophet Sallallahu stopped her because he thought, he thought that she's weak when he will look at her brother in that state maybe she will not be able to take it so when she was stopped so she asked oh Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam why did you stop me to look at the dead body of my brother so Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that you are weak hearted it's a possibility that you will not be able to take it but Sayyidah Safiya radiallahu ta'ala anha she was a very strong woman. She sent a message that that I'm not going to cry over his dead body, but I'm going to congratulate him. So this relationship of love between brothers and sisters that's very natural. So Sida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, her brother her brother when he passed away. Abdurrahman Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her she actually wrote a poetry for her so one translation of one of them is that oh brother that both of us for a long time were like the companions of a king and people started saying that we will never separate it but once we got separated it was as if we had never even didn't even spend a night together the second quality in the sister that she should be supportive and concerned she should have a supportive attitude and she should have concern for her brother you know just living separately is not a good thing so she now radiallahu ta'ala anhu when he realized that you know that his sister has become a Muslim and he was not a Muslim at that time so I he thought that he, he would martyr Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so he took the sword out and he went to he came out to go to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on, on his way he met Sayyidina Sayyid radiallahu anhu sahabi and he asked him where are you going so he said that, I, that I'm going to martyr the messenger of, of the Muslims the prophet of the Muslims sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so Sayyidina Ayy Sayyid said that go and take care of your family first your sister and your brother-in-law they have become Muslims so Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu you know this news you know it actually made him angry so he changed his path changed his way and went to to his sister's house and when he reached his sister's house his brother his sister and brother-in-law were reciting a few ayat of the Quran so he heard so then he knocked the door 
asked another sister, she realized that Umar has come, radiallahu anhu, was not a Muslim at that time. Saying so Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when the door was open for him, he entered, and so he asked his brother-in-law that we have heard, I've heard that you have become Muslim. So he said, if Islam is true, why should not we not accept it? So Umar got very upset. So he got upset and he started beating his brother-in-law. So when he started beating her, beating him, then a sister came in the middle. The Prophet Sayyidina Umar was so angry that he actually slapped his sister as well. So she was a woman. When she was slapped, she started crying. But she was so strong so she, that, that she replied, Umar, that the, the mother whose milk you have taken, I have taken the milk of the same mother. You can take out life from my body, but you cannot take out Iman from my heart. Now, now it was such a strong statement of a sister that it actually hit the heart. So the, the whole mood changed. So he said, all right, what were you reciting? Some of the ayat of the Quran were recited in front of him. So Allah Ta'ala had to put Iman in his heart. So he said, All right, take me to your Prophet. So the brother in law took him to Darul Artam where Prophet was. And then the door was knocked. Then Osman was very amazed that who is the one knocking the door. So some Sahabi, he looked through the hole of the door <coughs> and he saw that Sayyidina Umar is there and he had a sword in his hand. So he got scared. So they went to Prophet and said that Umar bin al-Khattab has come with a sword in his hand. So Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu ta'ala was there. He said that it doesn't matter. Open the door. If he has come with good intention, very good. But he has come with wrong intentions, then I'm going to chop off his head with his own sword. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala came in and his mood was changed absolutely. He said, we sat with the Prophet sallallahu The Prophet gave him da'wat of Islam and Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala recited kalima and became Muslim. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala, this sahabi, the reason that he became a Muslim, the means was his sister. Imam Muhammad bin Siri rahmatullahi his sister, uh, she used to help her brother in reciting the Quran correctly. She was a Qari of Quran and she has spent her 35 years of her life in reciting Quran. Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, her brother Muhammad bin Abu Bakr, when he passed away, so she, she, he had a brother and a sister. The brother was Qasim, so Qasim called, Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala called Qasim and Muhammad and kept them with herself. So they were small little kids. So Sida Aisha, whenever she had to feed them, she would make them sit in her lap and would feed them both one by one. And after that they would be done, then, then she would eat herself. So she would be taking care of her brother like that. This is the proof that how sisters should take care of their brothers. So Sida Aisha also, also take care, took care of her nephew Sayyidina Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu anhu. The third quality the third quality that sister should have, that she should have loyalty. And number four, honesty. So 
she should never lie with her parents and her brother. She should always be honest with her, with her brother. And she should also be trustworthy. That means that she should never deceive her brother. So if brothers have trusted her, she should never break that trust. To break the trust is a big sin. That's why when the sisters they do something wrong, the blame of that is not does not remain to her own personality but also goes on to her brother and her parents. The few words that were recited in the beginning and from the Quran that were these. Then I say the Maryam alayhi salam she came with her son to her people. So what did they say? They said, Ya Ukta Harun, O oh, sister of Harun. Maakana Abu Kimra Sau, your father was not an evil man. Wamaqanat Ummuki Bhagiya and your mother was not a immodest woman as well. If your parents and your brother were not were righteous, then how did you do this? That you are virgin and you have come back with a son. So that proves that any weakness in the sisters and the daughters is not only remain to them but also become the cause of the of the of an evil name of the whole family. The next topic is why you should be grateful to have a sister. So what are the benefits of having a sister? Number one, that majority of the times that daughters, they are able to take the anger of their parents and she actually cools them down. So sometimes parents are angry and they scold the daughters and if she is an elderly woman, you know when the, the kids, they bother the small little kids, so she will take care of her brother and keep the kids away. Then she helps in the growth of her brother. And sometimes she also helps in the studies of the brother. So Hazrat says that he had two elder sisters. So with one, one was like eight, ten years elder. So I used to call her Appa. And the second was four or five years older. I used to call her Baji. So Hazrat is saying, so with Baji, I would do my schoolwork will play with her and will eat with her and the elder was like my mother she would give me bath she would change my clothes and she would take care of me but the but the the younger sister was like my friend so sisters support their brothers all the time and also hide their faults. So the brothers, they will do something naughty and they will hide. And the sisters are satisfying the parents, making excuses, oh, right, it has happened, so don't worry. And many times, the brother would not score well in the school and they have to get something signed from the parents and the parents when they will sign they will be very upset and they may they may also punish the child at these moments the brothers rather than getting it signed from the parents <laughs> go to the sisters and get it signed and the sisters are though like that 
that even if you sign a blank paper from them, they will just sign it. So the sisters actually hide the faults of the brothers. And she also makes your dinner when the mom is not available. So when the mo mothers are not there, then the elder sisters, they will, they will cook the food and feed him and will take care of them. And so she defends you in front of your parents. So many times, they will defend you in front of your parents. And she forgives you of your mistakes. She reminds you of your family obligation. She is always telling the brother that we, that these are the boundaries, these are the responsibilities. She, she, you should remain. She shares all your childhood memories. That all the memories that brothers have, they share it with them. She will always be your best friend of life. The sisters are the best friends of the brothers. When the kids, they live together, then they learn a lot of things from each other. For example, what, for example, what do you learn from siblings? Number one, love and support. Number two, cooperation and teamwork. They learn how to live together. Three, tolerance. We have seen and many times the brothers are just uh, making fun of their sisters. So they develop tolerance in, in them. And if they fight, after some time, the, after some time you have to fix it, that's called resolution. So they also resolve the matters as well. It also develops leadership in them. So also it develops assertiveness in them. Assertiveness is that, you know, that they make other person listen. You know, they, when they have to make a decision, they give arguments to each other. So whoever's personality is strong, he's able to make other person admit to his decision. So when they play with each other, they also have to negotiate with each other. So it also develop negotiation skills in each other. So anyway, the sister is such that she will always love her brother and support her, support him morally. And if and if he needs financial support, she also does that. So Imam Bukhari in the start, in the early in his early youth, he wanted to go on a journey to learn ilm but he did not have the expenses. So many days passed by. So Imam Bukhari his sister, he, she realized that my brother wants to go on a journey, but he does not have the expenses, so, so that's why he is just delaying the journey. So she actually sold her jewelry, and the money that she got out of that, she gave it to Imam Bukhari as hadiyah and said that you take it and you can head on to your, on your journey and you can learn in Imam Bukhari she asked you shall sold all of your jewelry so the sister said that she said may Allah Ta'ala will Allah Ta'ala will give me the jewelry of the, the of the paradise in, in place of that So it's a father, there was, there was father, son, and the brother-in-law. So a judge, a ruler, he caught all of these three, and he wanted to kill all of them. So one of the fam women family members, the, she came, and she actually started crying that, you know, if you kill all of these three, then there will be no Muhammad remain. 
so when she said that the ruler said all right you choose one of these i will not kill that man i'll kill the other two so people were expecting that she's going to choose her son because this relationship is such that in any circumstances the mother she protects her child so some were thinking no 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 she's going to choose her husband because he's a wife and for a wife the most important person is her husband but when she was given a choice that she has to choose one out of those she chose her brother you don't kill my brother and you can kill the other two so the ruler got very amazed at that and he said that you tell me why did you choose your brother why didn't you choose your father so she said that i'm a young i'm beautiful and if you kill my husband allah taala may give us give me another husband and i'll just get married a second time and allah taala will give me a husband again and if allah taala had give me husband, gives me husband again and maybe allah taala will give me a, another son so i can get a, another husband i can get another son but my my parents have passed away and i only only have one brother so i will not be able to get another brother so that's why i have chosen a, my brother because of that it affected the judge the ruler so much that he let said he forgave all of those three people and he did not kill any of those so this is how my sisters love their brothers that's that remains that's strong <coughs> So if you read the history of Islam there there are incidents that you will be amazed to speeding those that how how much things can a sister do for her brother so in Futuhat al-Sham there is a book so the author has written in that it, stories in that one story that he has written so has the ra radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he got became a captive in a war so the enemies were a lot in number so he they surrounded him he started fought with sword the sword broke then he fought with his spear that broke as well when nothing remained in his hand then the enemies they came and they captured him So when the war was over it was evening time to say the khalid bin walid that the allah ta'ala got to know the saint of zara that allah ta'ala no has been made a captive so he was very he was saddened by that <coughs> that he was such a strong warrior and enemies have kept him so he sent a person to abu ubeda radiyallahu ta'ala he was amir of the army that what should i be doing at this time so abu ubeda radiyallahu ta'ala and who he said that if whoever you trust you make him the charge of the rest of the army and you yourself go with some people and you try to set him free <laughs> so said the khalid bin walid radiyallahu anhu he picked up a few people soldiers and he headed towards the roman army and he chased them so the author writes that when this when this these people were set started to go so there was a soldier in that small little army who had wrapped his face on uh, had wrapped a cloth on his face so the some people would just wrap their faces except the eyes so there was a shield so he was shield and that 
soldier had wrapped a cloth around the shield and there was another bag that he had by the put on the back. So, so actually he had put it like that that you will not be able to see his body shape. And the way that this soldier was handling the horse, the people were amazed to look at how, what an expert and a strong young man is he who is so expert at, at horse riding. So Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid when he started, so this soldier also was along and he was ahead. So they reached a place where the army of the enemies were present. So this soldier, he, it attacked. So the Khalid bin Walid he saw that this young man who was at the front, he, he just like immersed his horse in the army of the enemy and with his spear was fighting with the army so much so that it got dis- he got disappeared in the army. This so, is Khalid bin Walid was very amazed that, that how would this young man come back? But after some time he saw that this young this young man was coming back riding his horse. So, Sayyid Khalid bin Walid decided that I'm going to go with this young man and fight. So Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid whenever the enemies will surround him this young man will come and will fight. And when this young man will be surrounded, Sayyidina Khalid will try will save him. So Allah Ta'ala gave victory to the Muslims and the enemies, they ran away. Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid Ta'ala and who he gathered all of his soldiers and then he addressed that to that young man, that who are you? That you are so brave then my heart is amazed looking at your bravery. But that, that soldier didn't reply back. So all the soldiers were very amazed that this Amir the, the, of, the, of, the, of the soldiers, he is asking and that person is not replying. How is it possible? So one Sahabi, he stepped up and he said to that young man, no young man, the leader of the army is asking you of something and you're not even responding. This is not good. So when he was reminded again and again, at that time a, a feminine voice came and the soldier said that I'm Khawla, I'm the sister of Zara Rabi Allah Ta'ala Anhu. When I heard that my brother has been made a captive, I made a decision then I'm going to set him free and I'll come by myself. And even if it means that I have to give my life, I'll give my life. Then Khalid was very amazed and he said, Khawla, why didn't you tell me before? So Khawla said that I was I was a woman. If I had asked, you would have stopped me. That's why I just came along. <laughs> So when the brothers are in trouble, the sisters help. And then she recited a few port- couplets of poetry. And she said, I don't know in what state is in my, my brother is. That if he is alive or he is dead. Oh brother, if you are alive, I will I'll make every possible effort to save you. And if you have been martyred, then, then you have already met the Prophet and you would have achieved the goal of your life. Like such a poetry. The Sayyid Khalid Rabi Allah Ta'ala started crying. Sayyid Khalid then he said, then he made a consultation that what should we should be doing. So the Muslims, they made a decision that, you know, the night has grown dark. We should go back at this time and we should come back tomorrow morning and should attack again. So Sayyid Khalid bin Walid Rabi Allah Ta'ala he took his soldiers and I was, was, uh, was about to set back. So, there, so at that time the, the, uh, the, the Romans, they came and they said, Aman, Aman, any safety, safety. So the Salih bin Walid said, all right, we'll give you safety. So they said, we, we realize that you are right, you are on truth. You know, we have come back 
We, sorry, we have separated from our army and we want to become Muslims. So Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid made the Muslims and kept them with himself. And then he asked them that, you know, that person that you have made a captive, what about him? So those Romans, they said, oh, that, that soldier who, used, who was fighting on the bare back of the horse, he said, yeah, that man, his name is Zarar. So, so they said that when he was made a captive, so our command, commander, his name was Marwan. So he said to us that we should send him to Kaiser of Rome. So he sent that soldier uh, with hundred people and he was also angry and he was also upset because Zarrar has killed his son called Hamdan. So Sayyidina Khalid Allah he said, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. So, but he knew now that Zarar is alive and he has been sent with hundred soldiers. So, Sayyidina Khalid anhu. So, there was a Sahabi called Rafi anhu. He called him and he said to him that you know all of these paths. I want that you take a few people behind those, that caravan of hundred people and you should stop them and should make Sayyidina Zarar radiallahu ta'ala free. So when Rafi radiallahu ta'ala was ready, so that young soldier was also sent along. So he asked that I should also be allowed to go with them. So Sayyidina Khan radiallahu ta'ala gave him permission. So he and her, so Sayyidina Khala radiallahu ta'ala also went along with that troop. So they went and at a place, there was a place on, the, on their path, there was only one pathway. <coughs> so everybody has to pass through that one path. So seeing the Rafi radiallahu at that point, he realized that those hundred people were act, had not actually passed that pathway yet. So he said to Muslims, that you just hide here and let's all sit together that if the enemy troop was to come then we will attack them. SubhanAllah after some time that troop of hundred people came from behind that had actually made Sayyidina Zara radiallahu ta'ala captive. So when they came close at that time Sayyidina Khala radiallahu ta'ala she initiated, he initiated and said Allahu Akbar and attacked. So at that time Allah Ta'ala helped the Muslims and all of those hundred people, some of them were killed and the other ran away. So Sayyidina Khawla radiallahu ta'ala anha, she took, she came to Sayyidina Zara radiallahu anha, her, her brother, you know, his hands and his feet were tied. So she untied them and had said, oh my brother, when I was heard about that you were made captive, there was a fire that got burnt in my heart and I thought that I would give my life, but I will make every possible effort to free you up. I thank Allah Ta'ala that He gave me tawfiq that I have set you free with my own hands. Just imagine that a sister, how much does she love her brother that she can actually take that step for her brother. So Allah Ta'ala give reward to the sisters because they sacrifice themselves for their, for their brothers. They give them love, they give them support. They take care of them. This relationship of a sister with a brother is a very deep relationship. That's why when the children are young, so when the, the mothers, the way that they introduce sisters to the brother is like, oh, he's like a moon. May Allah Ta'ala allow the sisters to live with their brothers with love. You know, some sisters are have anger, they're like spice. So for small little things they get spiced up. And they start giving bad du'as to their brothers. These sisters are not good. Shariat also does not allow that. Even if the brothers they bother you, the sister should be patient and should give them du'as. The sisters who gave bad du'as to their brothers 
And later on they get upset on those bandhuas themselves and they keep on crying. That, and then they think, oh, I gave a bad dua to my brother. You never know that time is the time of the acceptance of the dua and you make a bad dua for your brother and yet that's accepted, you know, that be, he'll be destroyed. So please, we request the sisters that they should be patient if the brothers bother, but they should never give bad duas to their brothers. Always give them good duas, should honor them, respect them, love them. Then even if there is one brother, he's like a shadow on the head, like a father. May Allah Ta'ala allow the sisters to live with love and care with the brothers. Mr. Muraqqa, for a few moments, close your eyes, lower your head. Anything that's in the dunya, you just cut yourself off from that and just immerse yourself in the zikr of Allah. And a, when a person looks into himself, he, feel, he sees his true picture. Open your heart, look into your look at your reality. سبحان ربي العالم الوهاب اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد المبارك وسلم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكون من الخاسرين والله we are your Ajis people يا الله please forgive all of our sins Ya Allah, please ignore our shortcomings. Ya Allah, please hide our faults. Ya Allah, please save us from an evil day. Ya Allah, save us from an evil night. Ya Allah, please save us from evil deeds. Ya Allah, please save us from an evil ending. Ya Allah, please after that you have given us guidance. Please save us from misguidance. Ya Allah, after that you want us the straight path. Allah, save us from getting misguided. <laughs> ya Allah, once you have given us your closeness, ya Allah, save us from Allah separating us. After that you have given us blessings, Ya Allah, please save us from losing those blessings. After that you have given us ilm, Ya Allah, save us from the deep acts of our ignorance. Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, save us from begging a door. Ya Allah, please save us from the deception of nafs and shaitan. Ya Allah, please save us from the deception of nafs and shaitan. Ya Allah, today these women of yours, Ya Allah, they have come. Ya Allah, please accept their coming. Ya Allah, in these, Ya Allah, please make this blessed day the means of changing of our hearts. Ya Allah, please make these days the means of your closeness. Ya Allah, please make the means of your mercy. Ya Allah, please make the means of our fear. Ya Allah, all of these beautiful teachings that are given. Ya Allah, please allow us to bring these in our lives, in our homes. Ya Allah, please ya Allah, enlighten our hearts with these teachings. Ya Allah, please enlighten our houses. <laughs> Ya Allah, please allow us to, Ya Allah, please take care of the rights of our family members. Ya Allah, we have been in heedlessness. Ya Allah, in sins. Ya Allah, what we were supposed to do, we have been away from that. Please, Ya Allah, save us from this heedlessness, this negligence. Ya Allah, your beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that every single night of Ramadan, Ya Allah, you, Ya Allah, you forgive hundreds of thousands of people. Ya Allah, please also forgive us. Please make the scene for ours as well. Please, Ya Allah, make the scene of our forgiveness as well. 
Ya Allah, your beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that people, they come from different tribes, different people, and all that they want is to remember you. Ya Allah, you say to your angels, go and announce that I've forgiven all of them. Ya Allah, ya Allah please also announce today that you've forgiven all of us, Ya Allah. That you have forgiven, please forgive us, Ya Allah. Please forgive us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we are, we are sinners, Ya Allah. But Ya Allah, we have come at your door. Ya Allah, we have come to the door of the most generous. Ya Allah, we have a hope that we will not go empty handed. Ya Allah, when a person sees a big door, when a beggar sees a big, big door, then he will call out loud. Ya Allah, we have come to the biggest door, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we come at your door. Ya Allah, please don't Ya Allah, return us empty handed. Ya Allah, please don't return us empty handed. Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, send us back. The state that we are forgiven. Ya Allah, we have made our hearts black by sinning. Ya Allah, in your mercy, Allah, your mercy has taken us to this door. Ya Allah, please have mercy on us. Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, send us, in, send us back in a state that we are forgiven, Ya Allah. Ya Allah. Ya Allah, when, when you look at mercy, look with mercy, Ya Allah, then he can make Fudel bin Ayaz, who is the leader of the robbers, you make him the leader of the pious. Ya Allah, when you look at first with mercy, Ya Allah, Bashar Hafi, who was an alcohol addict, Ya Allah, you gave him the alcohol of your love. Ya Allah, when you look at somebody with mercy, Ya Allah, please look at us with that one side of mercy. Ya Allah, it's a matter of your one side of mercy, of love. Ya Allah, it's a matter of our life. Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, have mercy on us. Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, please, please, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahim, please have mercy on us. Ya Allah, there was a man. hundred people. Ya Allah, who set out for another town. Ya Allah, fires. Ya Allah, you forgave him. Ya Allah, we have the town of fires. Have mercy on us, sinners, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, I could not become a pious person, but I am sitting with the pious people. Ya Allah, I could not become pious. But have come and sit with the pious, Allah, with the barakat of these pious people. Please forgive me as well. Ya Allah, please put your love in our hearts, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, because of these pious people, please, Ya Allah, also clean my heart. Ya Allah, we are your weak people. Ya Allah, we recognize our weakness. Ya Allah, we do Tawbah at night, we break it in the morning. Ya Allah, we do Tawbah in the morning, we break it at night. Ya Allah, we take one few steps, we take a lot of steps back. Ya Allah, we're weak people. Ya Allah, please have mercy on us, weak. Ya Allah, please. Ya Allah, please have mercy on us. Ya Allah, please fill our hearts with your love, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please fill our hearts with your beloved. With the love of your beloved, Salah Sam, please fill our hearts with the love of your, of your beloved, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please give us for sure of our prayers, the player of our sudu. Ya Allah, please give us the player of the du'as at the, at the middle of the night. Ya Allah, how, what people are those who stand up in the middle of the night and they beg you and they raise their hands and you don't reject their prayers. Ya Allah, what sort of people are those? Ya Allah, in the last portion of the night, they talk to you, they do sajdas of love, and Ya Allah, you mentioned them in the angels. Ya Allah, please include us amongst those as well. Please include us amongst those as well. Ya Allah, we are so scared. Ya Allah, we are with pious. Ya Allah, let's go back. What will happen to us? Ya Allah, please have mercy on us. Ya Allah, please. Ya Allah, please. Ya Allah, please. Ya Allah, allow us. To, ya Allah, please allow us to sit with your pious all our life. Ya Allah, we have been robbed. Ya Allah, we are scared of getting robbed again. Please save us from getting robbed. Ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah please have mercy on us. 
Ya Allah, these women have come from far. Ya Allah, we have seen the people of dunya. That if the women come at somebody's door, people even forgive. But ya Allah, the cases of killings. Ya Allah, today these women have come at your door. Ya Allah. Ya Allah, mercy. We also please forgive Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please forgive Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please forgive Ya Allah. Ya Allah, have mercy on all of us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, whatever we have asked, please give. Ya Allah, we wanted to ask, could not ask. Ya Allah, give that as well. Ya Allah, please prolong. Ya Allah, put barakat in the life of our Hazrat. Ya Allah, please send thousands of blessings on him. Ya Allah, ya Allah we can return his favors. But Ya Allah, you give him favors. Ya Allah, you give him favors, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please have mercy. Ya Allah, please have mercy, Ya Allah. And all of our relatives, our family members, our mashaykh, our teachers, our parents, whoever has, Ya Allah, passed away, please forgive all of them, Ya Allah. Whoever you have forgiven, Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, ya Allah give them, Ya Allah, darajat. Rabbana taqabbal minna, innaka anta sameeh wal aleem, wa tabalayna innaka anta tawabu rahim. صلى الله تعالى على فني قطي سيدنا محمد على آله وأصحابه أجمعين برحمتك يا رب العالمين